Okay, so before starting my AI presentation, I couldn't stand, but, uh, but ask you for a little poll, because it's a very relevant audience, very relevant conference, very relevant topic. So the question is, um, I'm like really curious, like when you open those websites and see cookie walls, how many of you actually read the small fine print behind the cookie wall? Oh, and one shy hint. <laughs> oh, um, I do apologize you personally because there will be some comments in my presentation uh, towards regulators, so I do apologize you personally. <laughs> uh, and it's not, nothing to do, like, uh, only to make the regulator actually work as opposed to damage. But, okay, the next question, so, uh, well, I mean, it's probably rhetorical, but I, I still, I just like want to get it on the record so I can forward reference that specific point, that specific poll in that specific audience. So how many of you uh, like cookie walls? Hate cookie walls? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so thank you for the little poll. Uh, so on the record, uh, my personal opinion, by trying to regulate the privacy, they just broke the internet, and I had a similar poll on LinkedIn, and actually 16% of the respondents said that uh, as soon as they, on Google, click on a website that has a special annoying cookie wall, they just like close the website and say, well, just forget it. <laughs> so uh, on the record, at least based on the poll, thousand and a half respondents, 16% actually prefer just not to go to any walls because it's, it's annoying. At least annoying. But anyway, so now back to your presentation. Uh, today I wanted to highlight just a couple of things because I think uh, it's the quality versus quantity. So I'm not going to abuse you with super charts and something, something boring. But today I wanted to highlight uh, just a couple of things. Before that, uh, uh, what I think is a very relevant joke. So I understand it's a professional conference, but but it's, it's halfway through uh, lunch already. So. Uh, a joke is about a man who's coming to his friend and seeing his friend playing chess with a dog. And he's stunned. Apparently, he's saying, hey, like, buddy, uh, that's like something incredible. Like, you are playing chess with a dog, so the dog is like that smart. And the man just like throws the one who's playing a dismissive look, say, that dog's smart? Are you kidding me? She's already lost twice. <laughs> Yeah, so whenever like I chat, actually, uh, this is a fact, whenever I chat with uh, colleagues, friends uh, about AI, uh, of course, like 95% is chat GPT. So 95% are fact conversation. Another 4% is mid journey. Another 1% is everything else, uh, uh, just in case you're curious. So whenever I talk, uh, they say, ah, I tried this chat GPT, just and he got a couple of questions wrong. So yeah, no, Google is better. It's an extremely typical response. Uh, and to me, it's striking because it's extremely reminding me of that joke about the dismissive tone, like, dog, smart. <laughs> She's lost twice. How could possibly she be smart? But just like not seeing the fact that it's a dog playing chess. So uh, I wanted to highlight a couple of points. Like, why? Why? First, I think it's it's truly important to understand why last six months we live in a different world, completely different world. Two things that I think are just changing everything. And one thing is that AI finally got creative. Uh, a year ago, five years ago, ten years ago, uh, this conversation between like computer versus man ultimately ended up well, but men could be like a composer, a painter, and AI or computer will never be able to draw or, or be a poet or do something uh, creative. So yeah, a routine task and then maybe something robotic, that's it. No longer that's true. So the AI, as of now, is able to outbeat the human in something that the human felt as long as one year ago, purely reserved to human, being creative. Uh, that specific picture <laughs> is a product of AI. <laughs> picture before is a product of AI. Actually, the whole presentation is a product of AI. <laughs> uh, even those lines, 
ChatGPT, like uh, I just like typed yesterday because I was preparing that presentation. Like, why do you think AI is fabulous? Generative AI is fabulous because it has the remarkable ability to create, innovate, and imagine new possibilities beyond human limitations, revolutionizing various fields and enhancing your understanding of creativity. Even those words were created by AI. So the creativity uh, is something that is uh, changing everything. It comes in multiple shapes and forms. So images, texts, music, video, legal contracts, uh, anything. It's creative. Second is it knows how to reason things. It's reasoning. That's like a from human perspective, extremely simple question I asked yesterday. Uh, how do you balance chessboard? Because I, I like chess. So I know chess jokes, I, I play chess, uh, I like chess, so my questions are chess. So how do you balance a chessboard, pillow, egg? Uh, I tried to think something where I could barely imagine a ready-to-use answer on Wikipedia. So when you ask a biography of some famous man, probably it's like easy copy and paste Wikipedia article. So to me, that's not, not remarkable. Uh, uh, demonstration of AI abilities, but, but look at the detailed answer. Right. So by the way, those pictures also product of AI, <laughs> mid-journey, <laughs> version five. Uh, and, and look, just, just read yourself, I won't bother, but, but, but it's reasoning. It says, hey, if you look at three objects, like first take the board, of course, uh, um, balance it, uh, look for those exceptions and things, and at the pillow, balance it, take a neck, be careful because egg is round. So uh, I couldn't possibly imagine a more intelligent answer from a human being. Uh, so reasoning means two things. One, uh, it's not just able to access all the data, all the information that we have there. Yeah, there's Wikipedia for that. Uh, it's able to connect and draw conclusions. Means uh, build a knowledge matrix whole information exponentially in the degree of all information. It can connect things uh, and come with information which is not readily available, which is infinitely times more. Uh, again, that changes absolutely everything. And the second conclusion is uh, drawing directly from that. It can actually uh, build an actions plan for itself. Uh, I'm still not yet calling himself or herself, just itself. But uh, maybe a regulation will come in 10 years. <laughs> it's the time, <laughs> Mr. He or her. But, but for now, it's it. And, and uh, probably uh, many of you have heard this, this, this concept called AutoGPT. Raise your hands if you did. OK, couple of hands. So AutoGPT is, is actually uh, a concept where the AI is connected to the loop. So answer a question, action on the question, raise new questions, build a plan, action on the new questions. So to me, that's kind of definition of every human being live. <laughs> this is how you wake up, this is how you build your day, this is how you build your future, career, uh, achieve your goals, etc. because specifically by solving iterative goals, uh, you achieve enormous results. So uh, please forgive me for spending just so much time on just two things, but I think, uh, again, those uh, who think Ah, ChatGPT mistakes some facts, so I'd rather go back to Google. Uh, please just, just evaluate what you could do uh, if you have access to that power. The power of creativity uh, and the power of infinite knowledge with reasoning. Uh, that changes everything. By the way, a technical comment. Uh, uh, luckily, OpenAI is, is a company that I like really respect for their uh, not only just being innovative, but also uh, having that uh, open approach mindset. So it's built APIs. So there is like a finite time where you can literally type with your fingers with ChatGPT, but uh, this engine is also available as API. So if you build platforms that don't even require you typing those questions, it actually can iterate. Computer, ChatGPT, AI, computer again, means a completely human-less work for any goal. You just define the goal, I need that to happen, and launch, and just go have lunch, and then enjoy the result after that. So that dramatically changes everything. Now, uh, again, a couple of our remarks. 
uh, that I think are like worth evaluating. Uh, I like the, the comment uh, that we need to focus as opposed to like solving details, like how cookie walls need to appear, uh, uh, focusing on the major things. So the little discussed elephant in the room is that an immediate, as we're sitting, immediate effect on the job market is something unexpected. So some time ago, it was widely believed that uh, robots, AI, computers, machines will first eliminate the physical work, the, like the simple. Uh, next, it will go after like a little more educated, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In reality, this is not happening. What's happening instead, it's the lowest work that actually have left unaffected. The drivers, the waiters, uh, the physical work, et cetera, like probably the safe assumption they will keep their jobs uh, for nearest uh, future, if not forever. The most immediately affected is the most sensitive, the widest, the most respected, the core uh, of a human is the middle professional class. That's the most affected. Uh, behind the scenes, a lot is being talked about those massive layoff waves. Surprise, surprise, first coming from a big tech. A coincidence? Maybe. Uh, but publicly, of course, the reason is like, hey, like economy is getting slow because the Fed is raising the rates, so the money is becoming expensive, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we just must lay off tens of thousands. Again, on the record, we're talking hundreds of thousands of people in the tech sector in the US alone because it makes their numbers public. Best of my knowledge, uh, we're talking a massive layoffs in tech in Lithuania. Foreign companies closing their offices, we're talking hundreds of people. For Lithuania, it's a lot just being laid off. And actually, uh, I've talked uh, uh, last week with the HR company, they said that they are trying to build a business case for earning on layoffs. So how do you earn from companies letting people go as opposed to, as opposed to uh, hiring them? That's weird, I think. Like HR, first time ever said, I'm not like earning from hiring, I'm trying to learn uh, how people are getting laid off. This is not publicly discussed at all. And again, the official reason you will find is the economy getting slow. But, but again, I have heard a lot of strong voices that it's actually uh, the first wave, a massive wave uh, of that specific trend because tech is the first who can identify. No longer you need like a group of seven programmers with PM and, and six developers. You just like, yeah, for now, just one PM and six developers go because that guy is way more productive. Uh, and for later, even that chain will disappear and so on. So this is not something future. This is happening right, actually it has been happening last month. Uh, you've seen it in the news behind the prints that Amazon laid off 20,000, Facebook 20,000, Microsoft and so on, so on, so on. So this is super urgent, super important. This is not publicly discussed. If I was to focus on what were immediate threats, uh, it's a little bit less uh, uh, like the other official, like is gonna know or not know uh, what I'm eating for breakfast. Uh, this is immediate threat. Uh, <clears throat> but also uh, the opportunities. So we are heading into the world. Again, this is probably not happening tomorrow or, or a couple of days from now. This is probably like more 10, 20 years, maybe 30 or 50. But it looks like the whole economy is shifting towards creators, individuals. The term creator already been coined. It means a single individual uh, leveraging a platform uh, and basically nobody else, period. So we can run massive media business being a single creator. So yes, there is already examples on how it goes. Imagine in every single area, be it production, services, uh, media, entertainment, etc., Hollywood movies, you don't have like no longer like 10,000 people, you have like a single camera, uh, and then a movie and the viewers, period. Like no stuff in between, period. Actually, technically, uh, something like Avatar with a single producer already is possible. Yeah, so it's a matter of time. So we're gearing towards uh, economy where just no middle class. Creators, users, a ton of supporting machines, platforms, robots, etc. So the good news is that it looks like uh, the economy will be able to produce everything humans need uh, without actually humans need to work. 
So basic income and basically have whatever you want without actually having to work this is actually coming because the economy definitely will be able to, to produce more than the humans need. The bad news, uh, as opposed to like 90% people working and seeing the results in daily life, uh, it will be few creators, a single creator along any vertical, uh, shaping what we use, what we eat, what we see, what we consume, what, how we entertain. And the rest, some people just working just for the work itself. Again, the metaphor I often use here is look at the sports industry today, like no longer a human needs to be physically strong. Still, like some prefer to spend a career and get gold medals in Olympics. These are like few, like 0.00% of population. Some still go to gym. Not that somebody cares that they're like sporty or not. Not that the food in the evening depends on that. Not just for itself. Majority, though, prefer it's a coach, a popcorn, beer, and a movie. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> so very, very, very similar processes is, is happening professionally. Again, this will take some time. But, but I think individually, for every single one individual, it means like actually pretty binary choice. Uh, either I could possibly become a creator, occupy even the tiniest vertical, maybe like a specific channel uh, or specific product or media entertainment on specific like food platform, et cetera, et cetera, but that's mine, <laughs> where I have my ideas, where I shape uh, how it's built, and I use like all the tools to reach my audience and I directly sell or, or give my service to the audience. Uh, or highly possible, my profession doesn't exist. Uh, so the bad news, yes, it's a real threat. It's happening now, and it boils down to every single professional individual actually at least raising this question. So the good defense, just learn daily like what's going on, what's affecting my industry specific now and today, what tools are available, who's building what. So just like spending, like my personal advice is like a day a week. That's a minimum time investment, time commitment to learning like what's going on in my specific domain, unless you spend something like that. Hardly I follow the news and then know what's going on. Uh, you could spend even more. So at least start with that, because then you get the understanding, actually you have a chance. And actually, uh, I'm personally more like looking forward, because uh, I, I love the, the, the world where everybody is, is a creator of something. I hate the world, again, on the record, officially, as of now, 70% of human population state they don't like their work. That's a hard fact across the board. So to me, spending like most of your non-sleeping time doing something you don't like, that's wrong, should not happen. Uh, so this guy has a chance to fix that, uh, but of course you need to put some effort behind.